All right, so we got the cedar down on the ceilings in the seed starting area and also in the root cellar. And got the white metal on two walls, the walls that are insulated. The reason the metal is on the wall is to isolate the root cellar from the rest of the greenhouse because the rest of the greenhouse will be heated and we don't want additional heat in the root cellar. We want to keep it cool. We installed the door to the root cellar. It's winter in Montana right now and it's been well below zero for several weeks. And I gotta just say the cool thing is is that with no heat whatsoever inside this greenhouse, it has not gotten below 26. Now 26 is still sounds pretty cold, but when it's minus 14 or minus 18 outside, I think that's doing pretty good. Especially since we have not had any sunshine to charge up the floor or the walls or anything. So that's just the difference by being buried in the ground. So what we're doing is we're moving our attention now to the rocket mass heater. And we've leveled out the spot where it's gonna go and piled these fire bricks. So basically there's a floor here with nine, three bricks wide, three bricks long, and then I had to run a brick and a half that way. And the, the fire's gonna go, the, the sticks, the fuel, will go in this uh, port here. The fire burns horizontally through this, and then it'll come up here. This is going to have fire bricks uh, built up inside, which, which we haven't done yet. And th those are gonna be inside this uh, 30 gallon barrel that we cut off to the right length. Uh, what they say on a rocket mass is the ratio that you want is one, two, and three, or it can be four coming up too. So <clears throat> this is about nine inches. This burn chamber is about 18 inches. And then where we go up, it's actually 22 inches. But so there's a little bit of latitude in the height of your um, insulated chimney here. The 55 gallon drum is gonna go on top, upside down, and it'll be a little off center. So it'll be about two inches here, and then it'll come out this way so the, the fire comes up, or the smoke comes up, down, and it'll go back through this six inch vent, out that way, around, and then back up and out. So I'm gonna add a, right where this brick is. These are just dry stacked right now. I haven't put them together. But we're gonna put a four inch air intake right here, and this is gonna to go to the exterior outside, and we'll draw our exterior air in to, for combustion air. So floor level is gonna be up about a foot higher than this gravel. So most of this is gonna be in the floor. And this whole duct, the chimney pipe and everything, that's gonna be in the floor. We're gonna basically pack cob, which is clay, sand, and straw around that, and that'll be our thermal mass. And that's gonna be in the floor system. These are clean outs that we can take and run it if we get any buildup in this pipe here, we can pop these caps off and run a chimney brush through there, and clean the pipes out. There's gonna be a concrete form here, or a, like a dam, and then we'll put a steel grate to get the snow, because our door is right here, so you can scrape the, knock the snow off your feet when you walk in. So when you want to get to the clean house, you just lift the grate out and you'll be able to get to those. So they be nice, easy access. Uh, and we're putting right above these pipes, and this is where our heat's going to be stored. I'm going to have a rack with all of our little starts are going to be living right here next to this window. And uh, so before they go into the aquaponics system, when they're still small, they're going to sit here and they'll get the, all that warmth. So that'll be nice. We're going to mix up some cob now. It, which is clay, sand, and straw, <clears throat> and pack around these pipes so that they don't shift or move while we're working on it and forming up our concrete and everything. And um, let's go out and see what Walter's doing outside. He's out in the snow, harvesting some clay. Wow, look at that. <laughs> so this was solid oh, yeah. frozen. I had to break through a hole. Once I got in, it was nice and warm on the inside and we were able to scoop out the clay that we needed. Ice was about four inches thick. The crust of it all frozen and then underneath it was nice and soft. Yeah, it looks like about two feet of snow on top. And it gets some nice clay in the, underneath.
We've got three parts of sand and one part of clay. And I'm just mixing the dry ingredients together. Here we go again. We're doing this in a wheelbarrow because we don't have a lot of space. Sometimes people just put a tarp out on the ground and do this on the, on the tarp. <coughs> well, that's some. Um, <laughs> it's more of a consistency thing, you know? Looks like it needs some more. Maybe that's too much. If you get too much water, you can just add more of the other stuff. So this is a little soupy. So we're going to add a little more. Get a little bit of sand here. One and a half of those. A little bit more clay. straw here pretty soon. So then I'm just going to put some straw in there and it just adds some reinforcement and <coughs> helps it all to stick together. So this is now starting to get pretty gooey and sticky and it's got this fiber in it from the straw and I think that's going to be okay to hold the pipes in place. So before we <clears throat> actually finalize the clay and get it all totally buried in clay, we are going to test this whole rocket stove. So we're going to get the whole thing put together and then we'll fire it up and make sure that it all drafts properly and vents right. We're going to have to connect the vent up and run it outside and do all that before we can test it. But uh, at least this part's done. When we get this all tested out and it's operating well, we're going to produce another video and show you the final project, final product, and how it came out, and share with you any additional things that we've learned. <laughs>